Christine uh, formed a group called Oasis, uh, Oasis Senior Supportive Living. Knowing that for all of us, whether we're young or any, old or anywhere in between, uh, that there are basic needs that keep us going, uh, that keep us as healthy as possible. And that is good nutrition, eating well, it's getting some forms of physical exercise, it's, um, uh, but critically, most important, it's spending time with other people, socializing happily with other people, and then it's important to gain knowledge about supports that we may need from time to time. <laughs>
board of seven people. Uh, the person chairing it at the time was the founder, Christine McMillan, who now lives in Toronto. And by coincidence, I had known Christine years before when she worked with the Ministry of Labour. Uh, and I was on a, a task force that uh, worked, uh, worked with, with that ministry. And uh, so I got deeply involved. I guess, I mean, it's not any coincidence that I'm almost 75 years old myself, that uh, an organization that was serving the needs of older people and had been uh, started by older people uh, was likely to be something I'd be interested in. So uh, briefly, what exactly is Oasis? Is it a, a club similar to, say, um, the Red Hat Society that seniors can join and uh, maybe even start their own branch in different parts of Canada? Well, um, uh, I don't know if club's quite the right word, but it's not the wrong word either. Uh, it's, uh, there, there is a, uh, we need to understand the demographics of our province uh, to fully understand why an organization like Oasis is as successful as it is. Uh, we know our society is aging. Uh, we have uh, lots of evidence of that, and it will continue to age for the next at least 25 years. And we also know that people are, it's, it's because the baby boom has aged in this country, and it's because uh, people are living longer. And uh, in fact, 25 years from now, the predicted number of people over 95 years of age is very, very high. And uh, so, um, with with that knowledge, uh, we we co we can look at the way people have decided to live in in as they've aged, and what we have is what are called uh, naturally occurring retirement communities. They're they're places that older people have naturally gravitated to. They're usually apartment buildings or condominium buildings, uh, and. Uh, but there, we've discovered this concentration of people, and so then once you've done that, you can say, okay, well, when people are living close together, getting to know each other, particularly in a building like an apartment building or a condo where you may not want to go very far in the winter to spend time with other people, uh, so uh, people are uh, made the decision independently that they'll live in a particular area of the city and that the, where there are certain amenities that are attractive to them and that they will live in uh, a, a, usually a building like a, an apartment or condo where they are comfortable and where they don't worry about maintenance and all those kinds of things. And that's what's happened. And so um, we have, we call them NORCs, which is not a particularly <laughs> attractive name. But it's a naturally occurring retirement community, an NORC. And if you do a demographic study of Ontario, you will find concentrations of NORCs where people have naturally gravitated for the reasons I've cited, uh, convenience uh, and uh, comfort. And so once you've found the NORC, uh, then it, it the original oasis is an orc in a, um, an apartment building uh, of, uh, oh, I think it's about 50 units, 50 to 60 units, uh, in a part of the city where it's literally right across the street from a very large grocery store. It's close to a lot of bus routes. Uh, all the things I've cited that are amenities for, for people. And uh, so, what Oasis has done is found this NORC and, and talked to the people in the NORC and uh, asked them, uh, well, it, it, the original project, which was through the Council on Aging in Kingston, was trying to find out if elder abuse was an issue. And when they interviewed the building in this, uh, the people in this building, the most frequent answer they got was, no, that wasn't something they were worried about. What they were worried about was isolation, loneliness. In fact, a one woman had said, the thing I worry about most of all, because my family don't live in Kingston, is uh, that I will die alone and nobody will find me for at least a day or two or more, uh, which is uh, very sad. 
So Christine uh, undertook to change the situation. Uh, and with uh, it needs the cooperation of the landlord. So uh, landlord is a very important component of this. Christine uh, formed a group called Oasis. Uh, Oasis Senior Supportive Living. Knowing that for all of us, whether we're young or any, old or anywhere in between, uh, that there are basic needs that keep us going, uh, that keep us as healthy as possible. And that is good nutrition, eating well, it's getting some forms of physical exercise, it's, um, uh, but critically, most important, it's spending time with other people, socializing happily with other people, and then it's important to gain knowledge about supports that we may need from time to time. So um, Christine combined all this into Oasis. Uh, we've had some problems clearly with COVID. Uh, we've had to refine the program, uh, but it's not gone away. And um, so uh, the original Oasis, which we will return to someday, uh, provides three three-course meals uh, dinners a week in a common room. And we'll go into um, sure. some of the, the further details of the, the programs um, later on. Uh, okay. The concept of the naturally occurring um, retirement, communities. retirement communities. Yes. So that is opposed as opposed to uh, purpose-built that's right. Retirement facilities. That's right. Thank you. That's a really important distinction. Uh, uh, the uh, purpose-built retirement facilities, uh, for the most part, um, are not inexpensive. And uh, we're looking at, at a mid-range rental apartment building. Uh, most of the people in there, uh, I don't know their personal financial circumstances, but I think it's safe for me to say the uh, purpose-built retirement community is uh, outside the price range. And uh, so uh, that market is functioning very well and serving many people, but there are many, many, many people in the community who are older uh, who are never going to be living in one of those. So what we're talking about is an ordinary apartment building that's owned and operated by a local landlord. Uh, it was a, a, a very effective landlord, and the um, uh, and the building isn't exclusively seniors. And the people, the older people who live in the building, will tell you they like it better that way. Uh, they like to actually see and talk to people who are younger, who are going off to work every day or whatever. Uh, so it's also part of a much larger complex. There are at least six or seven apartment buildings in that area which it, again is not unusual uh, when it's an area that's a very central location. The start of OSS or the starting point, the basis of OSS is that there are many seniors who are living independently, they're living in their own homes, but they're all close together uh, in one um, one complex, one building. Uh, in some cases, it's not a building. <laughs> we look at that as well. And uh, so Oasis finds this uh, uh, con concentration of seniors. And let's talk about um, who is involved in Oasis, both in terms of organizing and participating in it. It's a very important partnership. It, it, what, uh, what it involves, I've already mentioned a, la a willing landlord. Um, now, the landlord that uh, is the landlord for the original Oasis uh, loves Oasis. And yes, and you can feel free to mention the name. I think it's Homestead. Okay, it's Homestead Land Holdings. It's a huge landlord. They own a building right across Canada. It's a local entrepreneurial success story. Um, they're quite happy to uh, serve testimonials for Oasis to other landlords. Um, 
because Oasis um, not only is a good citizenship on their part, but it's also uh, what they say is they uh, people retain their tenancies longer and uh, they're good tenants. And so they're more than happy to cooperate in keeping Oasis alive and well. Um, they contribute space and that is what's really important. That's an extremely important component of Oasis uh, because we need somewhere to do things uh, communally. And uh, the other component is uh, a volunteer board of directors, which I chair. And these are, at the moment, uh, none of these are people living in the building, uh, they're, but they're all active community members. And what that does is bring Oasis out into the community uh, and bring resources in. And then uh, we have, uh, we, we're just a volunteer board. Um, uh, Oasis is incorporated not-for-profit organization, uh, but we don't have uh, any, uh, we have a modest amount of money. Uh, we, we are, uh, and we don't have an administration as such. We don't have a bureaucracy. So uh, what we have done is partnered with Providence Care Hospital in Kingston, uh, which has a number of outreach programs in the community. And through their director of these programs, um, we get uh, this, the, the, the money we do have to run Oasis, which comes from the Ministry of Health, uh, goes through Providence. Uh, so there are bookkeepers and uh, dispensers of, of cash when we want to buy something. Uh, the other very important service they offer us is they provide a program coordinator to the program. And I would insist that Oasis cannot function without this. This is uh, a paid uh, person who is there, uh, normal working hours, who supports the members to acquire the programming that they wish to have. And we've, uh, Oasis in Kingston has been very fortunate to have the same person in this role since its inception, and she's wonderful. And she, she manages extremely well to allow the members themselves to do the kinds of things they want to do. At the same time, she's a confident uh, she supports the families of the members, particularly the families that aren't living in Kingston. And it's a huge boon to them that they have an older relative, usually a mother or a father, that they know somebody else is watching out for that person. And so they don't have to worry quite as much as they might otherwise do. Because in our oasis, we have many people in their 90s. We just had one person celebrate her 99th birthday. And she's still happily living in her own apartment. Uh, and uh, uh, so uh, uh, if, in a case like that, uh, it makes such a huge difference to everybody that there is somebody there uh, who can uh, keep watch and provide advice when asked. That sounds excellent. And for um, the member who's 99, yay, yeah, <laughs> going for the yeah. century. <laughs> Looks very much as if she'll get there. She looks in pretty good shape. <laughs> wonderful, <laughs> wonderful. So um, we we have the community of seniors living in their own apartments in a, a apartment building, and you see there are various needs that Oasis addresses. Um, let's take them one by one and look at how the program addresses. Maybe we can start first with nutrition. Yes. Uh, up until the pandemic, uh, we there's a common room that's open to any tenant in the building, but we reserve the common room three evenings a week, and we the landlord very nicely provided a storage cupboard for us, so we have a place where we store tables and chairs, and we bring those out and we set them up. Uh, volunteers help. Um, we set them up at like a, a really nice dining room. Uh, with tablecloths and all that kind of stuff. And um, a caterer comes in and delivers a three-course, healthy three-course meal uh, with very generous portions so that uh, 
most people bring their little Tupperware containers with them, and so we're really feeding them more than three meals uh, a, a week. Uh, they get some leftovers as well. And the, um, uh, it's subsidized. Uh, the members pay for it, about half the cost, and the general fund of Oasis pays the other half of the cost. I think I mentioned earlier that we are funded by the Ministry of Health, uh, to, and the, the two primary costs uh, are the salary of the program coordinator and her benefits, and the uh, subsidy for the, for the three meals a week. The landlord uh, also provides a lounge that is exclusively for the use of Oasis members, and it's, uh, the program coordinator has a kind of corner that's her office, the rest of it is uh, comfortable chairs and people, again, we're, uh, we got some new chairs because of COVID so that people could sit comfortably but not have to sit close together. We had some couches before and that just doesn't work anymore. So that's the nutrition component. So members in the program, they get, um, they're part of this uh, subsidize community communal dining where every three well three days of every week there's a nutritious meal so that you're ensuring that uh, that there's proper nutrition uh, so no one is undernourished yes uh, we are also uh, part of a program called the good food box uh, which has been particularly important through COVID, where fresh uh, vegetables are delivered. And I just read an email from our program coordinator today who pointed out that people have revived um, old uh, skills like uh, canning uh, and so on, and uh, have had uh, all kinds of ways of using fresh vegetables and preserving fresh vegetables. Uh, so that. So through COVID, we've tried to adapt. I think, the pro again, the program coordinator is the heart and soul of this. We wouldn't be able to do it without her. And it's kept the members going. And uh, we've, you know, touch wood, we've not had uh, any instance of COVID at all. Uh, the, um, uh, during COVID, uh, we couldn't have communal dining. Uh, we have been delivering individual meals to people. Why was uh, nutrition uh, so important? Did you find that uh, without a program like this, seniors, there would be a senior problem with seniors? It's, it's a huge issue. It's a huge issue and it isn't always necessary affordability or uh, ability to access a grocery store. Um, uh, Christine McMillan, who is now a 91-year-old, uh, still living independently, now in Toronto, uh, where she started a new oasis, uh, she describes it very graphically, i.e., uh, you, you're getting older, you, you're lonely. It all comes down to loneliness. You're in your apartment by yourself. You do not much else but watch television. Uh, you don't have, you know, in, especially once you reach your 90s, a lot of your friends just are no longer with you. Uh, you, um, uh, you just sort of don't bother anymore, right? You, 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 you don't bother getting dressed in the morning. When it's time for lunch, you, as Christine would say, you just settle for tea and toast. And you, and of course, it's a downward spiral. What happens is you're not eating properly, which means you're losing energy, uh, which mean, and it's also losing mental acuity, uh, which uh, nutrition is an underlying, underlying critical component. And so you just kind of don't bother anymore, and you keep not bothering. And you don't bother because there's nobody else around you to be nagging you to be doing anything. Uh, so, uh, but nutrition is fundamentally important to maintaining physical health and mental health, both. Well, thank you for that. So the nutrition com components is 
uh, affects um, or has an impact on many things. Let's take a look more closely at the next one, which is social isolation. OSS, um, just as a communal dining alone, I can see that having a positive uh, uh, impact. Well, I mentioned earlier as well, there's a lounge, and that's open all the time, uh, that the program coordinator is there, so from morning till evening. And, um, uh, you know, I think her working hours are 8.30 to 4.30, something like that. So that's when the lounge is open. And in the lounge is a ever-growing library uh, with all kinds of books and puzzles that people can take. Uh, we have one member is the librarian uh, uh, who keeps uh, stock of everything. Uh, there's a big screen television and uh, so it's it's morning coffee chat visit uh, but then in the afternoon the programming varies um, one afternoon is a movie afternoon uh, at, with the big screen and uh, another afternoon is crafts afternoon and there's a knitting group that comes in and they've been knitting things for the uh, for the hospital, for instance. Uh, so they also feel like they're contributing to the community and doing so. And um, I, there's wee bowling using the TV. There's, I, I, there's a bunch of stuff. There's something every day, right? In fact, I remember one of the members being interviewed when I was able to hear her. And as she said, I'm never bored. I just know that every day I can go down to the lounge and there'll be something going on, or I can go in the morning and just have a visit. And so, um, and of course the members have got to know each other. This is the critically important component. Uh, when they first lived in the building, uh, nobody knew each other. It was the, you know, the corridors were silent. That's when people felt really, really lonely. Now they, could, they know each other. So what members also do is visit each other in their apartments. And they also plan their own excursions. For instance, there's a McDonald's literally across the street from this building, and a group of them often go over there for coffee in the morning, uh, just to get out. Uh, and so, uh, so the, the lounge has been a way of people forming relationships. Uh, I don't go there very often. Uh, when I have gone, it's usually around some sort of special event in the lounge. Uh, and I've gone there, you know, before Christmas, the people have been making Christmas decorations, have been decorating trees and so on. It's, it's just really nice. Let's uh, look at another area that uh, Oasis uh, pays attention to and tries to address, uh, and that is physical fitness for seniors. How does that, um, how is that organized? Yeah, we have two programs. Again, when I'm talking about the use of the lounge, uh, one afternoon uh, is uh, what uh, Tina calls chair exercises. Tina, the coordinator, Tina runs those, uh, and those are for people who, uh, for which mobility and balance is an issue. I mean, many of the people we have in the program are using walkers, for instance. Uh, so Tina devises a whole uh, list of exercises where people can sit while they are doing them so that we don't have people falling over. Uh, those who uh, can do exercises uh, standing up, uh, we have a VON program that comes in. And, and they, they come in weekly and go through an exercise regime with people. We do that one in the common room where there's more room. Okay. Well, I also, uh, Tina issued pedometers to people uh, to count their steps, and so when the weather's nice, they've had outdoor walks as well, and people take their pedometers and they can tell you how many steps they've taken. Yes. Uh, I, there's a certain psychology to that, right? I have a pedometer on my phone, and I'd like to look and see. <laughs> Does that part, of, do those classes or those sessions take in the uh, fall prevention aspect of what OASIS does? Yeah, the other thing is uh, OASIS, I, I tried to emphasize that earlier, I don't know how well I did. Uh, we're, uh, the members generate the programming and the preferences. We, we're not telling, uh, as Christine said, 
uh, when she started Oasis, just because you turn 65 or whatever doesn't mean you leave your brains at the door. Uh, these are still thinking, active, intelligent people. Uh, they don't need to be treated like babies. And uh, so, um, so we listen to them and do the best we can to provide them with what they want to do. Uh, and uh, amongst that as well, um, they have their own monthly meeting, at least they used to have before COVID. And all this will start again. And they uh, have a program uh, where they invite guest speakers in. And uh, they've had people come in to talk about false prevention. Uh, they've had the police come in to talk about scam artists. Uh, they've had a pharmacist come in to talk about particularly over-medication. Uh, and so you could, they, they're a whole list. They, it's not hard at all to get um, a, a list for a month, or so that's 12 months, well, 11 months a year, because then they have a Christmas party in December. Uh, but, uh, well, I think they have a Thanksgiving potluck, and they do, they do all this. We don't do this for them. I, I expect Tina gives them some help, but the ideas are generated by them. Uh, so, yeah, and the false prevention uh, a program uh, that, uh, that came through this uh, was an expert from the hospital, Providence Care, um, who has worked with them around false prevention. And uh, I am told it's been extremely effective. Which, you, if you look at statistics, you'll see the number of people who been forced into a decision about long-term care and so on, very, very, very often it's been precipitated by a bad fall. Yes, that's a major issue uh, for seniors, uh, falls yeah. and, uh, um, you know, injuries uh, that are caused by. Yeah. Um, so when we um, talk about Oasis, it originated in Kingston in one apartment building yes. but it has expanded. Tell yes. us about where where else we can find the Oasis uh, model in operation. I mentioned earlier that Christine McMillan moved to Toronto which is her home base. Her son lives there as well. I think he was insisting that she moved there so that he could uh, keep more of an eye on her. Uh, so she uh, she started a program in, uh, uh, in Toronto, uh, in apartment, well it's two buildings at uh, St. Clair West, uh, and she's, this is affiliated with an organization that is affiliated with the University Hospital Network. Uh, then uh, we are very blessed in Kingston uh, uh, to have the School of Rehabilitation Therapy at Queen's University and two professors there, Catherine Donnelly and Vince DePaul, who uh, were intrigued. One, uh, Catherine's an occupational therapist, Vince is a physiotherapist, a uh, physical therapist, sorry, who were intrigued uh, by Oasis. And they um, have, uh, they had a research grant uh, four years ago uh, that uh, where they opened up some other sites to be able to uh, compare results. Uh, that money ran out, but they have since been successful in getting another very major grant and are able to reopen the sites uh, over the next four years. And with the work that they are doing, uh, we will be able to academically properly evaluate the program. You uh, can hear me say I think it works, uh, but it certainly helps if there's a rigorous evaluation and so, you know good evidence that uh, this is more than worth the money that's uh, put into it. So Catherine and Vince have developed uh, three more sites in Kingston, uh, and. Uh, they're all apartment buildings, uh, and uh, they've developed a site in, um, uh, well, it's right on the boundary between Belleville and Trenton, uh, and uh, it's a mobile home park with 450 uh, homes, 
and a, a central recreation center. And then they partnered with their colleagues at Western University and McMaster University. And uh, both places there, actually the one in London is also, um, I think it's two homestead buildings. And the one in Hamilton is another landlord, uh, at, also an apartment building. So it's, it's, it's grown. Uh, Catherine and Vince have also made contact with some people in uh, Vancouver who are particularly interested in the Oasis model. Uh, that I can't give you details on because I'm not, this is all quite recent and I'm not as familiar with it. Uh, let's say we have an apartment building um, where lots of seniors live. Um, are there plans to expand into, without um, that formal structure of a, a research uh, program, is there any plans to expand or can someone approach Oasis and say, well, we have many people in our apartment building, can we uh, start an, an Oasis in our building? Well, there's nothing to stop people from doing it. And I also emphasize that Oasis is one model. It's not the be all and end all, uh, although I would argue it's a pretty good model. And, uh, but it does need money. It doesn't need a lot of money. Uh, but there needs to be a source of funding. Uh, because uh, as I uh, pointed out earlier, I think, uh, I'm not sure if I use the words or not, but uh, our program coordinator is the glue that holds it all together. And it's a person who requires a lot of skills, both knowledge and and ability to work with people. Uh, because there are as many personalities in the OASIS membership as there is in any other group of people, right? And, uh, and the membership varies depending on who's living in the building at any one time, but it's about 50 people in the original OASIS. So there are 50 individual personalities there. And, uh, and she, she works beautifully with them. Uh, and the uh, uh, so uh, and so it's a it's a job that has requires a lot of skills so it has to be properly remunerated uh, and then uh, the programming itself I pointed out that subsidizing the mail program is the biggest component but there are other costs as well associated with the program uh, and uh, so uh, the money needs to be found for these now I. Um, uh, I just did simple arithmetic. Um, given that uh, a placement in long-term care now is, I think, $180 a day, and give or take, I'm not sure the exact amount, but that's pretty close. And of course, with what's happened with COVID, there is uh, a general universal comment that uh, long-term care is underfunded. Uh, if people aren't paid enough to work there, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Well, um, I did the arithmetic on our away, original Oasis, and it's $10 per member per weekday. There's no comparison. So if we are able, as a result of this, to extend somebody's ability to live independently, even if it's only for a year or two, uh, we are saving the system a huge amount of money. And so this, but to present our case, uh, we do need really hard evidence. Uh, and uh, that's what Catherine and Vince are working to get. The, uh, the original research work they did for the uh, well, it was between two and three years that they had, you know, they just got started because it took a finite time to get buildings going and all this kind of stuff. Well, the ones they did get going were extremely successful. And the people who lived there were very sorry when it, when it ended. Um, but the, um, uh, they were already seeing positive results. They were seeing fewer falls. They were seeing fewer emergency hospital visits, 
and uh, which are all things you don't immediately think of, right? And they and they um, they were were seeing people staying longer in their apartments than what might otherwise have been the case. I mean, comparing it to people who weren't in an oasis or before there was an oasis program. So. Um, so we need, we need more of this evidence. Uh, I'm quite convinced, given the demographic situation, given that uh, our, our country uses long-term care as a fallback position far too frequently, uh, when there should be other options, I'm quite convinced that OASIS will prove itself to be a really good option. And uh, as I pointed out as well, uh, we have the support of landlords. Uh, landlords, uh, for a variety of reasons, uh, really where they have concentrations of older people living in their buildings, find it a huge asset to them. That sounds like a win-win all around. I, I agree. So do you have an idea when the research will be completed and that evidence of the effectiveness of OSS would be available that we can uh, have it in Canada so that maybe provincial governments all across uh, Canada can see. That's right. We, um, uh, we, we they have four years to do this work. We should have, and as I said, uh, the initial project work they did, they had to get these sites new sites up and running. They don't have to do that this time uh, because people are more than willing to become involved again. Uh, so that that helps. And uh, so we've got four years. By the end of four years, we should have pretty good numbers, I would think. Uh, and um, uh, I also think with the events that we've lived through for the last year and a half, uh, that there is, I think, more interest in alternatives to long-term care uh, or programs to defer placement to long-term care. The, I mean, the other programs that obviously people are looking at are uh, extensions to home care provision. Uh, that is another point with OASIS. Um, people who live in that building, who are members of Oasis, in some cases uh, are able to, to qualify for home care as well and use it just like anybody else uh, who is eligible. Uh, but Vince and Catherine have been able to show that our Oasis members, uh, members have used home care uh, less frequently than their counterparts in other buildings. So again, it, it, I don't know how you qu quantify fewer emergency visits or slightly less use of home care or whatever, but it all adds up uh, a lot. And uh, at the same time, you've got a group of, I know they would tell you, much happier people uh, than would otherwise be the case, which is contributing to them being in better health. That sounds like success all around, not only in terms of the dollars and cents for um, for everyone, uh, you know, lower hospital costs, lower healthcare costs, um, but the final part that you spoke about, people being happier where they are, happy to be living independently in their own homes, um, enjoying their golden years. I think that's that's a bonus that this uh, program has shown us is available when we work together. Yes, that's right. Uh, so we'll, uh, we'll continue working on this. I mean, I, uh, you asked me at the very beginning how I got involved, and I said I, I joined because a friend asked me to. And, uh, but I, uh, I've become quite fascinated with all of this. I, uh, as I did point out, um, I'm of an age to be really interested myself. But, but um, I think, uh, too, that uh, uh, it, it's important for all of us to understand uh, what makes people healthy. Uh, and 
Uh, I've learned a huge amount through, I've become very involved now in the local Ontario health team uh, on one of the projects there as a result of that. Uh, there is a huge desire on the part of many older people to continue to live in their own home environments. It may not be the, own, the original home, um, but it, it will be a home-like, uh, you know, where they're surrounded, if it's an apartment, where they're surrounded by their treasures and their furniture and uh, all the things that they're familiar with. Uh, I think all this is extremely important to our sense of place and uh, that uh, we'll do everything we can to uh, help people to continue to do this. Thank you so much. So the, those were the um, questions that I had, uh, the areas that I wanted to cover. Is there anything that we haven't touched on that you'd like to add as we close? I think I mentioned in passing earlier that uh, Oasis isn't the be-all and end-all. I think there are other ideas emerging uh, about uh, co-op living and uh, all kinds of other ideas about how people can continue to live independently in a, a, a happy and healthy way. Uh, I would simply suggest that Oasis is one uh, great, potentially successful way of doing it. Uh, I also uh, think it looks easy on, on the surface, uh, it, you know, it sounds easy, uh, but I, I do emphasize that it does name, it does need an underlying group of partners who all have a commitment, the landlord, the community board, the uh, agency that supports the board, in our case, uh, Province Care, uh, and it needs a really good, solid coordinator who knows what, what he or she is doing uh, and can work successfully with the members. So that's that's the formula, uh, and it it it's it takes time to achieve it, and it takes a lot of effort on everybody's part to keep it going. Uh, and to constantly, constantly be remembering that we're doing this with the members of Oasis, not for them. Absolutely. I, I think that's key. That, uh, uh, and I remember um, very uh, early in Diversity Canada's own uh, work, uh, one uh, interviewee that we had, we were interviewing seniors for their perspective, and uh, that came across very clearly that um, seniors want organizations that will work with them, not do things to them or for them. Right. They want to be very much a part of uh, the uh, shaping of any program and the delivery of, of any program. That's right. Yes, that's great. So that's wonderful. Thank you very much for sharing with us, Helen, the uh, this beautiful program, OASIS, which helps seniors to live independently and enjoy their golden years uh, with each other and also contributing to uh, the community in which they live. Thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. My pleasure. Thank you. So there you have it. That was the OASIS model of uh, providing supports to seniors who are living independently and enjoying their golden years, retiring, aging in place. I am Celia Sanka, Executive Director of the Diversity Canada Foundation, the organization that brings you goldenvoices.com. That's the online portal where you'll find this episode of the Golden Years Fireside Chat series, as well as other episodes where we speak with experts as well as everyday seniors on topics under the theme of living longer and living well. See you next time at goldenvoices.com. Until we meet again, take good care of yourself. Bye for now.